The Nazi regime killed millions of people. We say never again. It was not true. I believe in the law because I am from Argentina. In 70, when I was 18, the killing started. The military killed thousands of people. The top generals were prosecuted for mass murder, and I was a deputy prosecutor. So it was a huge challenge. And I saw how the information we provide, the evidence we present, change everything. The measurement is not just what's happening inside this place. The measurement of this court is how the court impacts in the world. The city who today are the victims, one day will watch what happened here, in which those who believe they had the, the right of life or death are facing justice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please greet the prosecutor and the Minister of Justice of the Federal Republic of Germany, Sabina Leuthäuser Schnarrenberger. Let me just say a few words why we need the movies. In fact, we learn about justice through movies. You learn about what happened in Nuremberg through judgment on Nuremberg. We learn what happened in this country with movies about Hitler, with the, the, the movies about what happened in East Europe. So we need movies. And movies connect things that media cannot connect. Angelina Jolie movie present the war and what happened in a war in a way you cannot read in any newspaper. And interestingly, the movie ends with one of the characters surrounding himself to be prosecuted by international justice. And this look in the movie, OK, it's a dream. In fact, it's true that the international community abandoned the Balkans, but at the end, something happened, the beginning of a change. After in some, after some events, there was justice in the Balkans. 161 leaders responsible for committing massive atrocities in the Balkans were prosecuted. Sometimes people believe international justice cannot arrest people. You know how many of these 161 are still at large? 10%, 50%, zero. The number is zero. Took 18 years, Mladic is in jail. Karacic is in jail. The process is before them. So movies explain the need for justice, but also the Balkans now have the benefit that Angelina should lead the vote time to give recognition to them. Now they are listening. The world knows what happened to them. And that's also what movies are doing. Movies promote reconciliation. And that's why Cinema for Peace is so important. And let me conclude this to show how change is so big. The International Criminal Court started nine years ago. In those days, there were a lot of hostility against the court. However, just two years later, that full case arrived. And then it was three month debate what to do with that food. And finally, we were referred to the International Criminal Court. After three months debate, 11 votes in favor. As a consequence today, President Bashir is indicted. He's a fugitive criminal. Things keep going. And the first time I came here, I remember Saif Gaddafi was here. He was offering himself as the new leader of the Arab world, the modern person. And I, I am delighted that we see the real leaders of the Arab Spring. And I'm delighted to see how the Spring is moving, it's working, complicated, but moving ahead. And in fact, what happened last year was the Security Council decided to do justice in Libya. And this time was no hesitation, one day debate, 15 votes, everyone. Germany was leading, but US, Russia, China, India agreed. And what's happened today is Saif al-Islam is prosecuted by the International Criminal Court, and he's in jail. So the world is changing, and we need movies to understand the changes. Movies as the lady 
who is announcing the change is coming in Burma, and the movies, that doc the documentaries that uh, Three and Four P selected. Khodorkovsky made a deal with Yeltsin. He got Yukos for 300 million, and several months later, Yukos cost six billion dollars. Five billion for free. In around 2002, Khodorkovsky became the, the richest man in the world under 40. Если бы Ходорковский испугался сразу или сделал вид, что испугался, то, наверное, все бы прекратилось. Quiero hacer una denuncia contra los colaboradores del presidente Daniel Ortega por haber matado y herido a 22 periodistas internacionales. Vi skulle ut på ett vanligt jobb och vi visste inte att vi åkte mot döden. Todos tienen miedo a involucrarse porque ellos están en el poder. Ana Maria, that was my nom de guerre when I filmed with the guerrillas. Witnessing is the essence of being a documentary filmmaker. Capturing moments in time, never knowing how history will judge them. It is so hard to nail senior military officers who ordered this. When you want to indict a dictator, you need evidence. I filmed these generals in 1982. I've wanted to see them pay for their crimes. When we come along and do this kind of work, they're afraid. They're afraid, and they should be afraid, because we're coming after them. On the 16th of November, 2009, a Russian lawyer died in a Moscow detention center under excruciating circumstances. Sergei Magnitsky uncovered the largest tax fraud in Russian history, committed by officials of the Russian government. Yet the whistleblower paid a price when the officials he testified against arrested him and sent him to pretrial detention. They put him in dungeon-like conditions and they would turn off his hot water and flood it with sewage. Despite all this, Magnitsky refused to withdraw his testimony against the corrupt government officials. And this is the truth of the matter. And people who did it, they deserve punishment. Instead, Russian tax money was systematically stolen by corrupt tax officials, police officers and organized criminals, and used to fund a life of unimaginable luxury. A young Russian lawyer remains one of the darkest scandals in the petty history of Russia's criminal justice system. Sergei Magnitsky, who gave his life in fighting for justice for others, is our collective responsibility. He was tortured until he was no longer among the living. It is our responsibility to fight for real justice for Sergei Magnitsky, and this fight has only just begun. 
Sergei Magnitsky's aunt mentioned in the film that her nephew put his face in the law and that the law has always been his guide. This is true not only for Sergei, but also for all the lawyers who constantly fight for the rule of law. Bill Browder was the biggest foreign investor in Russia, and Sergei Magnitsky was his lawyer and he was his friend. Bill Browder started a global campaign to prevent the people responsible for Magnitsky's demise from entering the United States and the European Union, a campaign to introduce visa sanctions and freeze assets. One single man has campaigned relentlessly for the support of parliamentarians in furthering this cause. He has been transforming the face of justice on two continents and has kick-started a new form of accountability. The second Cinema for Peace Award for Justice goes to Bill Browder and the film Justice for the Gay by Hans Hermans and Martin Matt. The Cinema for Peace Award for Justice goes to Justice for Sergei and the Global Justice Campaign for Sergei Manitsky, initiated by Bill Browder. Thank you very much. We're really extremely honored by this uh, decision of the jury. And we would like to dedicate this award to Sergei and to his courageous family. Because Sergei did what to most of us seems impossible. He paid the ultimate price. He was willing to sacrifice his life in order to obtain justice in his country. And that to us was an ex extreme example and will remain that forever. Thank you. I'm Bill Browder, <clears throat> and Sergey was my lawyer. I was a businessman for most of my career, a businessman in Russia, and Sergey um, worked for me, and in working for me, um, he discovered the largest tax fraud in, in Russian history, which was committed by members of the Russian government. And unlike almost everybody else in Russia, um, he decided not to turn away, but instead decided to testify against the officials involved in this enormous crime. He testified in October of 2008, and one month later, he was arrested by the same officials he testified against. He was put in prison, he was tortured, and he was killed. He died at the age of 37, leaving a wife and two children. When I learned about his death on November 17, 2009, it was like a knife going through my heart. And I decided that I was going to devote my time, my energy, and my resources to making sure that the people who did this face justice. I've done a lot of things, and I've worked with a lot of different people, um, but one of the most um, one of the most resonant things that, that, that's happened in this whole campaign was this movie. Now, this movie was distributed um, uh, through the normal channels, but we also did one thing which was very unusual, which is we screened it at 10 different parliaments around the world at different times. And on the back of that, <clears throat> a very important piece of legislation has been put together by the U.S. Senate called the Sergei Magnitsky Act, which will freeze assets and ban visas for the people who killed Sergei and the people who perpetrate other gross human rights abuses. We've done the same thing at the European Parliament and we're working on the same thing at nine other parliaments in Europe. And when we, when we actually get this through, and I think we will get this through, it will be a new technology in fighting human rights abuses. Instead of people just condemning human rights abuses from afar, we're actually creating consequences for the people who do it. Cinema for Peace is all about making movies change the world. And this is one example where a small, simple documentary has and will change the world, and it will save lives, 
in a lot of different places. I want to thank Yako and Cinema for Peace for um, supporting the Justice for Sergei initiative, and I'd like to thank the jury for awarding this movie, or awarding this award to, for the movie tonight. It means a lot to us, and it means a lot to Sergei's family. Thank you very much. The jury selected second documentary, Granito, How to Nail a Dictator, a documentary produced by Paco Dionis and directed by Pamela Yates. And it show they collect 20 years ago, they went there, they came back two years ago. They were trying to call, put together information about the former dictator. And this year, just two, a few months ago, uh, one month ago, the dictator is prosecuted, indicted in Guatemala, using this movie as evidence. So they are taking my job. That's it. Thank you very much. The Cinema for Peace Award for Justice goes to Granito.